Hi there, me again in Crash the Wonderbird. He's recently been trimmed. His wings are a bit shorter. Well, we haven't cut his wings, the feathers. Um, so he's a bit unhappy. He's a bit disgruntled. Can't fly the same. He now truly lives up to his name, that being Crash. So we're going to do a response to comments and questions. So notice we're up to 56 subscribers. Thank you all for the newcomers that have joined and for the people that have been here since the beginning or joined at any point they're in. Thank you. For those of you who have been watching and haven't subscribed yet, try it. Subscribe. What's the worst that can happen? You get extra notifications. So I've got a new subscriber, Kathy M-N-G-U-N-I, Mingunny. Um, welcome. Or sorry, Kim McGunny. Sorry, thank you for joining the party. You joined a day ago. Now, I got a comment on a video by Kathy41463. Um, you just had a stroke. You left me a message four days ago. Um, and you want some motivation, you know, you, life's turned upside down and gotten a bit difficult. Yeah. Fun fact about a stroke, doesn't matter where you have it. At home, my case at work, um, in a restaurant, doesn't matter where that stroke happens. It's, it's going to devastate your world. Absolutely ruin it. Um... There's anger, there's frustration. Uh, I'm going to ask you, um, Kathy, to find the video I did under the letters of the alphabet. G is for grief or grieving. Uh, yeah. Stroke's a shit sandwich. It's an absolute, unadulterated shit sandwich. And there's nothing I can say that'll make it any better. And I, and I don't believe in spouting platitudes and, oh, there's a plan behind all of this and whatnot. I'm not going to do that. What I can say is this. It is extremely difficult the first two or three months after your stroke. It, it, it was unbelievably difficult for me. And, and I I can't even imagine what it's being like for you. And I, I don't know the nature of the stroke or the type of stroke you had um, or the deficits or difficulties you're currently facing. But it is, it is difficult. What I'm going to suggest is you... Um, you find your local support system, be that through your GP, be it through your local stroke association or whatever the case may be. Um, you're going to have to find someone that uh, you can reach out to, be that a clergy member, be that a family friend, be that your GP. I'm going to urge you, um, Kathy41463, go seek counseling, professional help. You're going to need it. Um, because there are so many negative ramifications that can present because of a stroke. And a lot of them are um, avoidable, right? So you can avoid some of the anxiety by going to counseling. You can avoid the potential of really horrid, bad depression because of counseling. Um, you can get, because of counseling on medications that can help you, right? there are many things you can do to help yourself so either go to your gp or go to your neurologist and say hey listen i need this um if you get benefits through your employer you might be able to seek out benefits that way for e8 like a uh, employee assistance or counseling or whatnot but definitely uh kathy i understand it, it's it's rocked your world trust me the first three or four weeks after my stroke i i was beside myself right? if it wasn't for some some friends and family uh being there being jovial helping me out this would be a different different situation altogether and i and i know you're going through a shit a shit state i i know that right um i don't know the the length and the breadth and the depth of it but i know what you're dealing with is is extremely difficult and all i can say is you don't have to suffer through this in silence and, and in solitude Just reach out for help get the help you need Joy Bradford, uh, thank you again for your lovely comments, right? Um, you're right. In your comment, you said, you know, make sure you get plenty of rest. I'm going to be honest. Two things that can help people that have had a stroke. Drink lots of water, stay hydrated, and sleep when you can. Right? Drink lots of water and sleep when you can. Right? Um, it's, it's really all you can do, right? Um, you know... It's, it's extremely difficult. It's, it's not an easy thing to have to deal with the stroke. So do what you can where you can, right? 
And once you find a bit of a stumbly bit, find the help you need, right? But drink lots of water, right? Uh, stay hydrated, right? Um, no, no, you got to stay hydrated. So, like, you know how you like the scotch? Yeah, you got to slow down on the alcohol. Oh, that's another thing. Don't drink a lot of booze, right? Um, my neurologist basically said I'm good for three a day to 14 a week, right? Now, I like pints of Guinness, so a pint of Guinness is actually one and a third, so I'm really good for two pints of Guinness, right, technically, but don't tell anyone I might have three. It, that might happen. Um, let's see, who else? Ashley, Ashley Stubbings. Haven't heard from you in a while, but I, you responded to um, a video I did on the 16th of January. Which video was that? Let's just find out, because I don't remember. Oh, that was on the topic I did on self-harm and suicide. So, yeah, um, that was a difficult video to make, and I honestly didn't know if YouTube would let that one fly. I didn't know if YouTube would let the title go. But then again, they let two fingers and a blowjob go, and I had a video titled that. So, um, no, it has nothing to do with what you're thinking. You'll have to watch the video to find out. I'm not going to spoil it. Suicide, self-harm after stroke, it's a very difficult to topic to talk about. It's a very difficult topic for people to recognize. It's a very difficult topic for people to want to embrace. Um, I realize that you're going to have friends, family, acquaintances that, that aren't comfortable to have that conversation. They're not equipped. They're, they're just, realistically, they're not available mentally or emotionally or intellectually to have that conversation. Does that make them a horrible human? Not completely. Right? If they're able to admit to you, hey, dude, this is something I'm not comfortable with. We need to get you to help. That's one thing. But if they're just perfunctory, you know, I'm not ready to deal with this. Just go away. Yeah, they're a horrible human, right? They should never be trusted again. Um, it is a very difficult topic, but it's a topic that I felt needed to be covered, um, mainly because two-thirds of those that have had a stroke are going to have a run-in with depression somehow, right? 66% are going to have a run-in with depression. How many of those are now going to end up so depressed, so emotionally dysfunctional, so psychologically damaged, right? And that doesn't have to be permanent, right? But because of things, circumstances, and situations, the only solution they see is taking themselves out of the picture, right? And if we, people that have had a stroke, can understand the risks that present to us, and if the people that are around us, that are supporting us, can understand some of the risks that could happen, that might make some of the conversations easier. And that, that was totally the, the, um, the concept behind that video. Now let's talk about the other um, other thing you people are horny ridiculously horny so I did the sex after a stroke and I did that a week ago it's got 90 views right that's one of my best performing videos to date it's got 90 views so you people you're all getting jiggy with it or you're just voyeurs I don't know which or you're voyeurs that want to get jiggy with it either way you're all you're all horrible horny humans which I support right um Again, didn't know if I'd do that video ever, but I did. Um, so, this has been an interesting week. I'm in the middle of returning to work. And you know what? Someone commented that ambient noise is a problem for them. It's still a bit of a problem for me as well. I believe that was you, Ashley. Right? So, ultimately, you know, if, if there's, again, like I keep saying, if you want to see me cover a, a uh, topic or some content, you can email to me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And as long as it's germane to the channel, germane to what we cover here, I'll happily do a video. I have not heard from my troll recently. So Seamus Sky, I haven't heard from you. I miss you. I hope you're okay. I haven't started the GoFundMe yet because I need to know you're going to be available for at least alternate Wednesdays to work under the bridge that I'm going to start the GoFundMe to help build. Uh, because every troll needs a bridge. I mean, um, so, 
the channel itself is doing fairly well, right? I, I never estimated I'd have, you know, more than a few subscribers. And I know most of the subscribers I currently have gained recently. I know I don't know. I know I don't know you personally. I know some of them have come from one or two of the stroke. Um, uh, shit, anomia. <laughs> uh, one or two of the, the, the stroke groups I belong to on Facebook. So... So you know, you know me there by my real name. Over here, I'm the Stroke Assaulter. Um, and people say, well, why do you call it the Stroke Assaulter? Well, one, I spent some time in the military in, here in Canada. And I was in the combat arm. I was an artilleryman. Um, and just so people put this into context, I don't like the term victim. I'm not a victim of my stroke. Right? To me, that means the stroke really is holding something over me. I'm not a stroke survivor because, again, to me, just I'm not just going to survive through this because to me that that has a connotation of complacency of, again, the stroke owns something about me, right? Um, I'm a stroke assaulter. I'm assaulting through the difficult obstacles of my stroke, looking to get to the objective so I can assault through the objective and get to where I want to be, consolidate, reorganize, and move on, right? And to me, my objective is treating my world as if my stroke never happened that within 24 months after my stroke because my neurologist says this is a possibility that you'll probably never know i have a stroke or have had a stroke um that's my objective right so that's why i call myself the stroke assaulter um and i try to live without fear right? I, I realize there's a lot of things you have to live with after a stroke that I have just to accept, right? I have to accept the fact that I'm now at a higher potential to have another stroke. We all do. I have to accept the fact that I could have early onset dementia or Alzheimer's. We all do. I have to accept the fact that because of my stroke, I'm now at a higher likelihood to develop um, major mental health issues like become bipolar, become schizophrenic because there's now some brain damage going on. Again, anyone that's had a stroke, you have to accept that, right? It's just a foregone conclusion. Um, or if you've had a brain injury, I have to accept the fact that I'll be on medication for the rest of my life, and you know some of it may or may not be covered by a drug plan. I have to accept you have to accept a lot of realities that could potentially happen after a stroke. Like there's a lot of things that could go shitty. So the day you survived your stroke in the hospital, you made your saving throw versus death. For all you D and D gamers out there, you'll get what I mean. So you rolled a natural 20 the day you had your stroke, right? Maybe it didn't look pretty. Maybe you didn't get out of the hospital right away. Maybe you're left with a few limitations, right? But regardless, you're alive. Now, you can't, if you choose to live in fear, how happy are you going to be? How happy are people around you going to be? Like, I'm not a victim. And, I, and at no point do I, am I looking for pity, nor one, will any be accepted. I'm not looking for anyone's pity. I'm looking for some patience, a little bit of kindness, a little bit of understanding. I'm not looking for pity. So that's why the channel name is Stroke Assaulter, because I'm choosing to engage my stroke at close quarters, do the damage I need to do to get where I need to be, right, and, and get on with my life. Right? And if that means... I have to fight through a few objectives here and there and encounter and breach a few obstacles. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm willing to accept that. Um, and I realize there are days you're never going to be like, you're going to look at me and you're never going to know I had a stroke. It won't even be apparent. And I'm hoping those days become more of my better days than, and then eventually become my every day. But I also have to accept the fact that I'm going to have the odd bad day here and there. And I just can't, I can't dwell on the bad days. That can be difficult because the bad days can be just wretched, but you have to accept that. So, there is a lot of initial difficulty with your stroke. So, Kathy, who recently had your stroke, right? And your world's a bit upside down, right? First off, I'm going to encourage you. Go get help, right? Call your GP, call your neurologist, 
call whoever you need to call, right, and go get some counseling because that's the best way I can help you is to encourage you to go get the help you need. Um, the best way I can help you is to encourage you that, you know what, it's going to be shitty for a couple of months. That's just the reality of it. But if you're willing to put in the work, and that is, those are going to be difficult days. I can remember the first three or four sessions with physio with a wonderful lady named Nancy. I can remember being with her for 45 minutes and just be exasperated, exhausted, spent, physically burnt, mentally, mentally just done. But you know what? It gets better. It gets easier. Um, once you start to take inventory of what you can do, what you can't do, right? Then you can start building a list of goals. I want to be able to do whatever, cut my food, tie my shoes, you know, go to the grocery store and, and, and be there for 10 minutes and, and get out with six items or whatever the case may be. Right? Set your goals and work towards the goals and do not even worry about the time. Just have a target. My target is in the grocery store, 10 minutes, six items and check out. Right? And if that's your goal and you can do it, great. And if you can't, keep working until you can. Keep working until you can. And, and Kathy, that's the best advice I have. Is is this is going to be difficult. It is going to be a challenge. And you're going to have to fight for your will. That's just the reality of it. You are going to have to put in some really hard work. And because you're going to need to put in some hard work, you're going to have to surround yourself with some really close friends and family that are, that are willing to do things that you're going to have to ask them to do that they've never had to do before. Um, and they're going to be your yeomanry. They're going to be there to support you, to help you get to where you need to be. And that's as simple as it gets. So if you've been watching the channel and you've been enjoying what you're watching, please like, share, subscribe. Right? Uh, if there's something you want to see me cover, again, you can email me at stroke at gmail.com. And again, as long as it's germane to the channel, I'll happily cover it. Um, if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be immediately confused or befuddled, they just don't know what's going on, right? Someone who's having vision problems or having, you know, their, their eyes are kind of messed up. They see in grayscale. They can't see half the world. They can't see it all. Things are blurry, whatever the case may be. Um, they have facial droop. They're not able to raise both arms equally effectively at all. They, they're unable to smile equally effectively or at all. They're slurred. They're stuttering speech. They're inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Um, they have general body weakness, weakness on one side. They have an inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.